Okay, so this video is going to be about analyzing the force data that we took from having the spring scales up on the table and just sort of having three of them in equilibrium. And we are going to plot this data on graph paper that is absolutely guaranteed to make YouTube go crazy. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to work with the angles. So I'm going to say, here's a line, and right over here, you, there's no way you can see this, but this says zero right over here. Now, I know that my next, so that's going to be that one, say, and then this one's going to be at 166 degrees. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to find 166 one, two, three, four, five, six. There's 166 right over there. And then I want to go um, 127 plus the easiest way to do it is to go 127 back that way. And so I'm going to find 130, 29, 28, 27. So that's where my angles are going to be. Now to make it scale diagram, what I have to do is I have to sort of translate these into distances. And so I'm going to say that probably 17, so one centimeter per newton is going to be a little bit big. So let's make it half of that. So 17 is going to be 8.5 centimeters. Uh, 7 newtons is going to be 3.5 centimeters and then 15 newtons is going to be 7.5 centimeters and they all turned out to be odd but that's okay so what I'm going to do is from my center I'll just kinda mark that right right there from my center I'm going to go out here 8.5 centimeters And so I'm going to label that 17 newtons. And then over here I've got my 3.5 centimeter which would be 7 newtons. So I'm going to come along this line like this and I'm going to go 3.5 newtons like that. I'm sorry, 7 newtons. And then I'm going to come Along this line over here, I'm going to go 7.5 centimeters. Uh, so put 7.5 right there, make that line up. I'm going to be on that one. And roughly, I come in like that. So here is a scale diagram of the forces that were felt by those spring scales. 17 newtons going that direction, 15 newtons going that direction, and 7 newtons going that direction. Now, what I want to do is I want to add these tip to tail. So, adding them tip to tail, what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing them one at a time, and we're going to use different graph paper for that. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this one right here. That's 17 newtons. That's pretty easy. So I'm basically going to start here, say, and I'm going to go, once again, I'll use the same scale, and I'm going to go 8.5 centimeters in this direction. I'm going to call that 17 newtons. Now, from here, I'm going to draw another one of my vectors. Well, let's draw this one. So I want to go up in this direction like this because, let's pull it down, right, this vector 
17 newtons points that way, 7 newtons points that way. So I need to figure out how, how I'm going to make this angle on my graph. Okay, well right now, up here, this says 180, and this is 127. So just a quick calculator. I could do it in my head, but 53 degrees. So what I'm going to want to do with my protractor, I'm going to slap my protractor right down on there. And I'm going to mark out 53 degrees right there. And I'm going to go 3.5 centimeters in that direction. So we're getting close right there. Uh, call that seven newtons. Okay, so now that's my 17 newton vector, that's my 17 newton vector, that's my 7 newton vector, that's my 7 newton vector. Now I have to figure out this one here. So it's going to be going something like that and I gotta figure out that angle. Well that angle is going to be it's going to be uh, what numbers did I have? I had 76 degrees. There's 76 degrees between that line and my next line. So I'm gonna just sort of draw in just a little bit of a helper to get me that. And so I'm going to go from the very, very tip of the 7 newton vector. And I line it up with my helper line. And I'm going to go 76 degrees off of that line, which is going to be right here. And I'm going to go 7.5 centimeters in that direction. And so that is 15 newtons. Okay. <coughs> so right now, I have added those vectors tip to tail. And what you see is that I ended up, this is where I ended up, and this is where I started. And you'll notice that they're very, very close to each other, which is exactly what I wanted to have happen. The reason why they're very, very close to each other is because the center point of this diagram, the center of my spring scales, was not moving. It was not accelerating. So the total force on that object, the total force on the little knot in the center was zero. And so if I add this force, this force, and this force using vector addition tip to tail, I should end up with zero net force. Now, because they, became, because they were very, very, very close to each other, I can say that I had zero net force. Now, some people are going to say, well, if you had zero net force, you should have ended up at the exact same spot. And I'd say true, but it's very, very important for you guys to understand experimental error. There is experimental and measurement error in everything that I did. Every single one of these numbers has an error associated with it. Every single one of these angles has an error associated with it. And every measurement that I took in the lab and every measurement that I took in making my diagram all have error. Okay, once again, for some reason, my camera cut me off, but I'll just uh, tack this on to the end and we'll make it work. 
when you add up all those errors together, this is with the little gap that you get on the diagram. So this represents the error that I had in my measurement.